long neck, beautiful wings, brilliant mind, and terrifying teeth. In this way, the genes that express specific forms in the biological system are the products of evolution and the traces of survival games played over hundreds of millions of years. As a result, some people acquire certain characteristics or functions. They believe that only evolution exists. But, as you know, losing teeth is also part of evolution, and sometimes losing them can tip the survival game in your favor. Human beings are no exception. Vitamin C is a prime example of this. We know all too well from past experience. Unlike vitamin D, which can only be synthesized through sunlight, vitamin C must be consumed externally, whether as a fruit or a nutritional supplement. The enzyme glucuronolactone oxidase is required in the final step of the conversion of glucose to vitamin C. It's not that humans don't have a gene that produces this enzyme, they do, but mutations cause it to malfunction. Surprisingly, the only mammals that cannot produce vitamin C on their own are bats, guinea pigs, and primates, including humans. As a result, even if the gene responsible for its synthesis is damaged, it is argued that survival was not difficult. In addition, this claim leaves scientists with yet another question mark. This is because, regardless of how readily available fruits are, traits that cannot synthesize vitamin C do not appear to have any special evolutionary advantage over traits that can synthesize vitamin C on their own. In other words, they didn't understand why this trait persisted in primates until now. As a result, scientists speculated that primates may have benefited from their inability to produce vitamin C. There are, in fact, several hypotheses here. To begin, the body requires glucose to produce vitamin C. It is hypothesized that if vitamin C can be obtained directly from fruits, the glucose used to make vitamin C can be used as an energy source for other organs such as the brain, making traits that cannot produce vitamin C more advantageous to survival. In other words, the energy and nutrients required to produce vitamin C can be invested in other organs. Professor Barry Hollywood, a biochemist at the National University of Singapore at the time, proposed the two hypotheses in 2001. Vitamin C is also an antioxidant, but it was discovered that active oxygen, such as hydrogen peroxide, is produced in the liver during the action of glucuronolactone oxidase. And, because too much of these can be harmful to cells, he argued that if the environment could consume vitamin C through fruit, it would be more advantageous for survival if the metabolism for producing vitamin C was halted. Simply put, there is far too much food waste when you cook your own food. If there is, it is preferable to purchase it from somewhere else. Later, in 2008, Dr. Amelie presented the recycling hypothesis to the Montpelier Molecular Genetics Institute in France. Humans, primates, and humans, unlike other mammals, do not produce vitamin C. She discovered that the biconcave of bats and guinea pigs had unusually high levels of a protein called, glut one foot. And she discovered that, in addition to transporting glucose, this protein absorbs the already used vitamin C, DHA, and aids in its conversion back to vitamin C. Simply put, it's vitamin C recycling. In other words, humans, like squid ink from dried squid, have a mechanism to use vitamin C as efficiently as possible as a compensatory mechanism for not being able to make it. Indeed, mice that can synthesize vitamin C on their own require approximately 60 mg of vitamin C per kilogram of body weight, whereas humans require approximately 1 mg per kilogram of body weight. Isn't that incredible efficiency? Furthermore, in 2019, Dr. Hans Conrad, a physiological chemist at Hohenheim University in Germany, discovered that vitamin C oxidized to DHA enters red blood cells via the aforementioned glut one foot and then damages cells in DNA in the process of being converted back to vitamin C. He revealed that despite losing the ability to synthesize vitamin C, our forefathers were better positioned to survive than those who did not. In fact, many cases are similar to vitamin C. Uric acid is another one of them. As a metabolic byproduct, humans excrete uric acid in their urine. The odd thing is that humans have more than three times the amount of lactic acid in their blood than other mammals. As a result, uric acid frequently crystallizes in the body, causing gout, which causes excruciating pain. 
Interestingly, our distant ancestors, such as Kenyopithecus and Dryopithecus, had an enzyme that could break down uric acid until 16 million years ago. However, for unknown reasons, a mutation occurred in the gene that encodes a similar decomposition enzyme at this time, and it lost its function, which has been passed down to the modern human race. But isn't that a little odd? A mutation in this good gene that breaks down uric acid would have been detrimental to survival, but how have apes evolved so far with this gene? Dr. Richard Johnson of the University of Colorado College of Medicine argued in Scientific America, an American archaeological magazine, in 2015 that the cause was on the right side of the energy. He claims that around 16 million years ago, tropical forests began to turn into grasslands as temperatures in Europe and Africa dropped rapidly, causing early apes to face food shortages every winter. However, at this time, a mutation that could not break down uric acid occurred by chance in a group of apes. According to Dr. Johnson, uric acid promotes the process of converting fructose from fruits into fat. Individuals who are unable to decompose uric acid due to genetic mutations can store fructose as fat due to lactic acid accumulation in the blood, which can help them in a food-scarce environment. It is argued that it would have had a survival advantage over other objects. There is also a recent hypothesis that uric acid protects brain nerves and that uric acid played a role in maintaining blood pressure in place of sodium millions of years ago in an environment where salt intake was difficult. One interesting fact is that uric acid helped mankind survive in the distant past, but in modern society, uric acid has caused obesity and hypertension due to excessive fructose and salt consumption. In addition to miscarriage, melanin pigment is an example of how damaged genes aided survival. Because early humans in Africa lost their hair and had melanin to protect their skin from UV rays, their skin color was dark at the time. However, as humans progressed to the Goyado region, mutations in genes related to melanin production awakened, and objects with pale skin color appeared. These traits appear to be segregated for survival because they do not properly block UV rays but the results were quite the opposite. This is due to vitamin D synthesis. In her book Skin, Dr. Nina Yablonski of the Department of Anthropology at Pennsylvania State University claims that because less sunlight reaches high latitudes, less UV is required to synthesize vitamin D. As a result, it is argued that melanin-rich skin in high latitudes blocks UV rays, slowing calcium metabolism and the rate of vitamin D synthesis, both of which are important for the immune system. In other words, at high altitude, dark skin with a lot of melanin has a disadvantage in terms of survival. Finally, among the human ancestors who migrated to Koido hundreds of thousands of years ago when there were no vitamin supplements, only the mutant group in which the melanin production gene was broken was able to survive by efficiently absorbing ultraviolet rays and producing vitamin D, and this has continued to this day. It occurred. According to scientists, Humans have lost up to 20,000 genes during the course of evolution. Some of these genes were also destroyed by the fire. Dr. George Perry, an anthropologist at Pennsylvania State University, discovered in 2015 that humans lost some genes for bitter taste approximately 1.6 million years ago. He claimed that the cause was the use of fire by Homo erectus at the time. It is said that our forefathers did not need many bitter genes because the toxic substances of plants are removed during the roasting and eating process. Not only that, but he has a copyright gene called MYH16 in his jaw, which is required for chewing food. It is normally expressed in chimps, but human mutations in this gene prevent it from working, he added. It was important to gain something, but it was also important to lose something until we arrived at the present humanity after such a long evolutionary process. And perhaps this natural phenomenon is related to how we perceive life. In a competitive society that constantly demands to win, isn't it sometimes better to let go of what we have rather than win? With regards to ideas. It was an odd RESERCH that tells you about science you've been curious about at least once. If you enjoyed watching, please subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.